If we were just selling at farmers markets, we I think we could kind of pick and choose which crops we'd grow, and maybe we'd grow five or six crops. But with the CSA, I found that it's very important to have a large diversity of different types of vegetables and even some fruits if you can. Because we have a CSA, we grow a pretty wide array of crops. And we have a fairly elaborate rotation system for all those crops. Currently, it's 11 years before something returns to the same spot at our farm. We block things together generally of like type. We grow um, winter squashes and cucumbers and melons. We grow leeks and onions. They've always been really reliable, great crops for us. Um, we have a section that we call lettuce and miscellaneous, and we grow lettuce and beets and carrots, chard and kale, all sorts of greens. We grow a spicy greens mix, a lettuce mix, a whole variety of greens, which I think are probably one of our most profitable enterprises. And I feel like we need to carve out some more space in our rotation for some of those things. Garlic, that's a whole section on our farm. Tomatoes and other solanaceous, eggplant and pepper, grow in a section together. We have a bean section, a pea section, which then is later uh, fall bro brassicas, fall broccoli and cabbage. We have a spring brassica section, which is then planted to uh, next year's garlic. We have potato section, and then we just started two new sections, which are um, fall and winter plantings. Space is always the issue at our farm. For us, it's really important to find which are our most profitable crops because we don't have space to grow any laggards. we got to just focus on the ones that are going to make us money. Well, like many farmers, we spend like early January going through the seed catalogs and figuring out what and how many of each varieties of seeds we want to order for the season, comparing it with what we have left over and how much we actually used last year. We start our first vegetables in the greenhouse in trays end of February or early March. As far as which varieties we choose, it's mostly based on just experience. Which seeds are reported to grow well here in the Northeast on our types of soil. As we grow, we figure out which varieties don't seem to grow well for us, which seem to be really attractive to pests. And we're always also trying new varieties or we'll see some variety that another farmer has grown and we really like it or like the looks of it. We follow a planting calendar that we've made based on a previous year's experience. So it'll say we need 10 trays minimum and we'll plant 10 or 12 trays of whatever it is and, and just sort of keep flowing through that. Certain crops you do sort of one big planting of like a spring broccoli and cabbage and tomatoes. Other crops, for example lettuce, you do plantings every week or so throughout the whole season. So. We follow a calendar for all of those things that helps keep our head on straight. It's always a good idea in the greenhouse to overplant. A lot of people figure 10%. There's often things that are lost. We've occasionally had trouble with mice, um, or uh, sometimes you'll get a disease, or just poor germination. So it's always a good idea to plan for excess, and we try to do that. Our farm year starts in mid-February with the smell of horse manure, which is kind of odd, but when we smell horse manure, we know the season's starting, and that's because um, we start our seedlings over a horse manure hotbed. The farm we met on had electric heat mats to start their seedlings. You'd be watering, you'd lean against the table, and you'd get a little electric shock. We just really didn't like the idea of buying something like that and then just throwing it away, buying it and throwing it away. When we moved here, we decided what we wanted to do was something a little less resource intensive. Our hotbed, it's horse manure and bedding mixed together, wet. It's put into the hay bale frame for insulation. As that horse manure decomposes, it releases a lot of heat. We have a tabletop above it, and all of our seedlings are germinated right there. In mid-February, we form half of our hotbed. We start our onions and leeks, our broccoli and things like that. And then several weeks later, we fill the other half of the hotbed and, and start our broccoli and cabbage and our tomatoes and peppers and whatnot. When it's just the hotbed, which is in our greenhouse, we are able to just cover with row cover and a piece of plastic on a cold night. And uh, we don't need any supplementary heat, even when it gets quite cold. The hotbed made of horse manure has just really been perfect for us. At the end of the season, we spread the hay bales on the field somewhere, we spread the manure, which is 
composted and it's just a compost at that point. And um, we've enriched the soil underneath and we haven't used any fossil fuel resources. So we, we really feel good about that system and it's worked really well for us. We have always made our own potting mix. We start off with straight sifted compost. We use perlite, some sort of organic fertilizer, peat moss, and a little bit of lime. We've always used different kind of cell trays. That's going to vary for each crop, how big the plants are going to get, how long it's going to be before you transplant them. Something we've tried in the last couple of years is doing soil blocks. We use what they call a soil blocker, which are available in most of the seed catalogs nowadays. And those also come in different sizes depending on what crop you're using. We use one and a half inch and two inch soil blocks. And we've been using it on many of our different crops. The roots start to grow into the surrounding soil much easier. And they actually provide more volume for the little seedlings to grow in. The soil blocks do require more time, and it does take more potting mix, a lot more actually, but uh, I figure in the long run that's good for your soil. I think the benefits definitely outweigh the, the drawbacks. They get a much more healthy start when you transplant them, and we've noticed on several crops the soil blocks have done much better. Even weeks later we can still notice the difference uh, as far as the size and the vigor and the color of the leaves.